So in previous videos on testing the protective bonding conductor here, 10 millimeters squared in a domestic dwelling, I've talked about the need to make sure that the consumer unit is isolated, could be a distribution board, the consumer unit is isolated, and you disconnect from the actual consumer unit your 10 millimeter squared conductor under test. It might be in an MET, a main earthing terminal when doing it. However, for AM2, AM2S and AM2E, they require you to disconnect this conductor this end as well in order to carry out the test. In my previous video, I talked about testing it at the screw and the pipe work with the other end of this cable within the consumer unit disconnected or MET. However, to do the AM2, AM2S and AM2E, they expect this disconnected. Why is that? They will talk about parallel earth paths. This installation here is a great example of how we've created a parallel earth path. So it could be that I'm testing here at the water, but I've actually disconnected the green and yellow protective bonding conductor for the gas. You would think when testing here and the end in the DB where your other probe is connected, you've probably got a long wandering lead between the two. You'd expect to get no reading. But in this case, this will clearly show you that you would get a reading. So I'd be testing here at the water and potentially the other end at the gas because of parallel earth paths. So let's just pull back. So that's the, the pipe work in the bathroom. And this is where the other side of the wall, we have um, obviously metallic gas boiler and all our metal pipe work. Here we've got both water and gas connections. Okay, and I'm talking about piped connections here, as well as our protective bonding conductor just here, which is going on to our gas. Okay, we can talk about the fact it's not in the right place. Obviously the safety labels are missing, etc. But this video is really to show you parallel earth paths. So of course, all of that metal work eventually connects down here to the water. So if I was testing from here, connected, and at the DB or consumer unit, the end of the gas, I would get a reading because the water pipes end up here and it would return on this conductor, which is the gas one. So in order to remove parallel earth paths for AM2, AM2S and AM2E, you need to disconnect at both ends. Disconnect at the clamp for the gas, disconnect at the clamp for the water and test your conductor. I would then like us to reconnect and test at the screw and the pipe. So effectively doing the test three times for the gas and three times for the water. You would record the highest reading. I'd expect them all to be the same, but you would record the highest reading that you get. But this illustrates quite clearly, doesn't it? That all the metal work from the gas boiler, which is also connected obviously to the water, creates a parallel earth path to the water and to the gas, meaning that if I test only with it connected, in this case, I'm gonna be picking up the return path from the gas. If at the other end, I'm connected to the gas, but testing to the water, I would get a reading, but I wouldn't have proved my protective bonding conductor is continuous because I would have picked up the return path for the gas. So back here, look at that, all of those parallel earth paths. So during your AM2, AM2S and AM2E examinations, please make sure we turn off the consumer unit or disc board we remove the protective conductor under test. So which bonding conductor are you using? Disconnect it. Come down to the location where the gas and water is. Disconnect the conductor. Test it, long wandering lead between the two as shown on the channel previously in our protective bonding videos. Reconnect it. Test again at the actual connection and at the pipe in order to carry out our protective bonding conductor test. We can clearly see all the parallel earth paths from the gas and water being here in the same location at the boiler. And obviously the water is just down here. Hopefully that's explained to you why you need to disconnect your protective bonding conductor at both ends during the test, obviously with the board isolated in order to carry out your protective bonding conductor test. As always, I hope this short video has been some help.